Hello Year 7 and today what you will need is um, your worksheet. So for that if you have a printer uh, you can print out the worksheet which is on Show My Homework and you can write as we go as we do in normal lessons as we work through with our booklets. If you don't have a printer um, I'd suggest to open up the worksheet document in Show My Homework um, and use pen and paper to write down the questions from the worksheet first or um, you can write as you go um, if you're competent with working with the two together. Um, but I don't want you writing all the stuff that's in the PowerPoints as we go, because you'll be um, overwriting essentially. And then when you're done, save your work somewhere safe, because we're going to put them in our booklets um, for another time. So firstly, let's have a look at this food hygiene rating, um, this sign. Where have you seen this before? Take a few moments to figure out where you think you've seen this before, if you have seen these signs and where have you seen them? So these signs can be found basically anywhere that sells food. Anywhere that sells food, you'll find them in the school canteen, you will find them in um, Sainsbury's, you will find them um, at Nando's, at McDonald's, anywhere that you go that sells food, you will see this. And the hygiene rating, they go from, as you can see, from zero to five. So five, you can see there is very good. And the further down you go, the, essentially the worse it is. So for example, you can see in there, they've got it in the window of a, a restaurant and you can see that it's number five, which means that it's clean. Um, the food is clean, the area is clean, um, the equipment is clean. So it's given a hygiene rating of five, it's very good. Whereas if you go further down the scale, you can see this chicken shop has given itself, well, they've given, um, they've given it a zero. Uh, which means that, I mean, you can read there that it says it needs urgent improvement um, necessary, which means that this place could essentially be closed down. Um, that in worst case scenario, the, the owner can be fined um, or even imprisoned. Um, the reasons being that the food will be unsafe. So if they're selling unsafe food, someone's going to be at risk of um, hurting themselves, essentially, or they're hurting the person that's um, buying the food. So with our learning objectives today, we're going to look at um, and to know what the main causes of food poisoning are. Um, within lesson, you would have been doing a Chinese chicken noodle soup. Well, I put the um, recipe on Show My Homework as well, so you're more than welcome to try that if you want. Um, but remember that it doesn't go towards the actual work that you're doing. Um, it's more a case of you can try this if you have the ingredients and so on, if you would like to. Um, and also to understand um, how to prevent food poisoning, how it works, um, how to stop it spreading, how it grows and so on, and how to prepare foods in a more hygienic way. So looking at your worksheets, so what is food poisoning is the first question that you can see on your worksheet. Um, and what you would be writing in there is this. So food poisoning is a very common and unpleasant illness, which can lead to serious health complications in some people. Um, so where, how it's being prepared, how it's being served, how it's being cooked, all these processes are ways of potentially spreading harmful bacteria and making someone ill. Um, what I would suggest with writing these down um, is to pause um, each slide so that you have time to write into your worksheet um, under the area where it says what is food poisoning and for every other question that comes up. So with this one, the next question down, you write it in that box. And within that box, these are the signs of food poisoning. So here we can see um, the, the main symptoms and signs of food poisoning are abdominal pain. So in your stomach, that's your stomach ache. Um, so as soon as you eat, have something that um, is um, contaminated with food poisoning, you will start feeling a stomach ache. Same with nausea, so feeling sick, vomiting, being sick, um, headaches, dizziness, high body temperature and feeling cold and shivery. So essentially the last one, so feeling um, high, body, high body temperature and feeling cold and shivery, is basically your body going to shock. Um, so you, you've had this food and suddenly you're not feeling too good and your body is not understanding how it's supposed to deal with this food poisoning bacteria and therefore you feel um, all these symptoms that um, are listed. So next question down, question three, what is the real cause of food poisoning? So the real cause of food poisoning is harmful bacteria and viruses. They are the main common cause of food poisoning. 
um, of which they are also known as pathogens. Now, pathogens is your key word here. So pathogenic bacteria. So they're harmful bacteria. They're harmful viruses. Um, you could also link um, with today's world. What's going on in today's world? We've got COVID. So COVID is a pathogen. It's making people sick. And it's the same with food poisoning. So these harmful bacteria and viruses with like salmonella and so on, they are causing food poisoning. So they're known as pathogens. Next question, what foods cause food poisoning? So some foods carry a higher risk of causing this food poisoning. So some of these foods have a higher um, risk in terms of they've got pathogens, they contain pathogens. And the only way to get rid of these pathogens is either to kill it or to um, in through cooking um, or to cure it and so on. So some of these foods have a higher risk of causing food poisoning. Um, they're simply known as high risk foods. So you have these high risk foods that we need to look out for. Um, and these um, high risk foods that you see this little list um, in the middle of your page, you have meat, fish, eggs, milk and cream. And on a separate note, these are protein foods, so they're high in protein. So from the last slide, I kind of gave away one of the answers to this question below. So below that list of the high risk foods that you've just made. So your next question down to one two up from um, the worksheet, you've got high risk foods contain a lot of what and what. So high risk foods being that they contain a lot of protein and moisture, being that this, um, the protein and moisture being within these foods are great at supporting pathogens. So us as human beings, we contain a lot of protein and moisture, therefore we're susceptible, we get, we're able to get these um, uh, flus and colds and so on. Also um, going back to good old COVID, hence why our, pro our bodies can take on these pathogens because we're high in protein and moisture. The idea being that these high risk foods contain protein and moisture, they are able to harbor these pathogens. They support the growth of these pathogens, these harmful bacteria. And where would you find these on the Eat Well Guide? Those that are guessed correctly, that would be in the protein section. So you can go back to watching these two videos when you get the chance. Um, they really help to show how harmful pathogenic bacteria uh, can spread. From the videos that you've just watched, hopefully just watched, it shows what cross-contamination is. Now, this is the um, question at the bottom of the first page of the worksheet. So cross-contamination from those um, adverts and from the, um, the other video that was on YouTube that's um, on the link before. So cross-contamination is where these harmful pathogens that are within high-risk foods that contain all this moisture and um, protein they're transferred from one food area or one food place or one food or, or human to human to another. So it's basically spreading harmful bacteria, harmful pathogens. So for example, there you can see that I would be, or someone would be handling raw chicken. And then if they don't wash their hands, that harmful bacteria is still on their hands after handling the raw chicken and then from the raw chicken, they go, oh, okay, well, I fancy an apple or I fancy something to eat that's ready to eat. So apple being a ready to eat food, it doesn't need to be cooked in any way. You can eat that straight away where with raw chicken, you cannot. Therefore, with the raw chicken, having these harmful bacteria, not washing your hands and then eating or touching another food, that's now contaminated with harmful pathogens. And this is known as cross-contamination. So turning over your worksheet or on, um, looking at the next sheet, um, you have uh, what are the main carriers of harmful bacteria that lead to cross-contamination? So when, when pathogens are spread and how bacteria is spread, especially within food rooms, um, one on the list is people. So us, we're, our hands and the way that we can spread 
bacteria is um, fantastic. We are great for spreading bacteria from one place to another. Again, link it to COVID. Um, pests and animals. So within a food room or within a, yeah, so within a food room or um, kitchen or so on, uh, there could be flies, there could be rats, there could be pets. They're also a great way to be spreading pathogens or harmful bacteria and putting it onto food um, and so on. And then work surfaces and equipment. So you think if you're using a knife, so going back to when we were preparing that chicken with the knife, and then you go to cut that apple, or you go to cut something else, or you put something onto the chopping board that's had the raw meat on there. And then that bacteria is still on that knife, it's still on that um, chopping board. And then you're preparing something else on that board. Um, and therefore that the, the thing that you're preparing has taken on that harmful bacteria. So can you guess which chopping board is used for each food? Each of these chopping boards that you can see are different colours. And if you can remember being in class, we have different chopping boards. Well, they're not at the back, they're in the cupboards now and down in the canteen and any, any, any um, place that serves food or is preparing food, they will have these chopping boards. Can you guess which chopping board is used for each? So then link them up on your worksheet or write them down and then press the space bar um, to reveal which one is used for which and see which ones you got right. Moving on, we can safely say now that raw meat, that we know that raw meat contains harmful pathogens that can be spread from other places if not handled correctly. So how would you prevent cross-contamination in our practical today? So if we were to be making our chicken noodle soup, how would be how would we be making sure that we weren't spreading this harmful, these harmful pathogens? What would you go about to do that? Um, so underneath your um, chopping board activity on your worksheet, just the next one down, how you how will you prevent cross-contamination in the practical today? So number one, for, first and foremost, you've got to be washing your hands before and after handling the raw meat. So when we're handling chicken, handling um, raw foods, um, so uh, high-risk foods, wash your hands before and after, and even in between, during, wash the equipment and so on. Using the correct chopping board. So if you can remember from your, or from what you've deciphered from your um, chopping board activity, it's the red chopping board. We would have been using the red chopping board uh, for our raw meat. So making sure that we were using that before. And then number three, you would be washing your equipment up properly after use. And as we've always done, and I always say in practicals, using hot soapy water, making sure that you are getting rid as much as you can of that, of the grease and the bacteria and so on as you're washing up. So making sure it is properly uh, clean and ready for next use so you're not spreading that bacteria. So how do you know if your chicken has been cooked properly? And you can see by that picture, looks can be deceiving on the outside. So on the outside, especially when you've got like barbecues and so on, or if the meat has gone on when it's been frozen, when it's when it's frozen and it looks done, and then you open it up and you see that it's completely raw in the middle. So you have to be careful with these types of things. So how do you know that your chicken has been cooked properly? Um, number one would be like it's just been done there. So you cut into the middle, you see if it's pink. Um, so this is down at the, the, the bottom of your work, well, one of the, near the bottom of your worksheet. So it's saying, how do you know if your chicken has been cooked properly and what checks can be made? So well, number one would be to cut to the middle, see if that chicken is pink. Uh, there should be no signs of blood either. That should be completely, um, the, 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 cut, the chicken should have been um, well drained of blood anyway during the, the process of um, when it was killed and so on, but there should be no signs of blood coming out. And especially in the juices, when you cook chicken and the juices within the chicken, they need to be running clear. So if you're cooking chicken and, and um, yeah, especially with chicken, it should be running clear, juices run clear. And then if you have such a thing as a temperature probe, we have them in the school. I don't know if we've used them yet, um, but if you've got one at home, um, ask mum, dad, guardian or whoever, see if you've got one. And these are a great way to figure out if that chicken is cooked inside and you put it into the chicken. And, you can, and if it's um, above 75 degrees, you've got um, a nicely cooked chicken. You've got to make sure it gets into the middle. As you can see there, again, looking at the picture. Get, so if it's not cooked in the middle, you know about it. 
Um, so use a, a temperature probe, 75 degrees, and that makes sure that all that harmful bacteria have been killed off and that the chicken is cooked completely through. Finish off your worksheet now by, um, there's two questions at the end. So I'd like you to write a couple of sentences saying what you think, well, what, what have you learned from this lesson at the end of your worksheet? What, 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 how has your views changed about how you're preparing food and how you would work next time with um, high risk food? So has it changed your views in any way as to how you're preparing them or how you would um, consider going into the kitchen next time and being a bit more safe? Finishing off today then, so I'd like you to uh, look at the four C's. Um, so research food hygiene to find out what these four C's are. So you can watch the clip uh, that's below um, uh, within the PowerPoint and then produce a leaflet or you can write it on your sheets that you've been working with. Um, as long as you take a picture or they're, they're there um, that, to be put into your booklet, that is fine. So um, just need to include the following, what are the four C's? Why are they important and how the four C's prevent the spread of bacteria? Thank you very much.